apologize. I'm coming back from pneumonia. So um, yeah. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone tonight. So the word is right. Uh, my camera will be caught up and there will not be a delay in just a second as my computer loads the live. But welcome, welcome, welcome to our double feature event tonight. Uh, we have Mary Blenderman and Sam Park in the house, y'all. Like, I have been waiting for months for this feature. Let's go. Uh, who gives a shit about a little pneumonia, right? Fuck pneumonia. I got poetry to listen to tonight. All right. Uh, so yes, um, uh, thank you all so very, very much for being here. I'm so excited to, um, oh man, this night. Y'all don't even know. If you have to leave early or you miss our features, then go back on the live and watch it because it's going to be on the word is right, W-R-I-T-E. Uh, feel free to share the link. If someone could do me a solid and post the Zoom link in the live, that would help me a lot because I don't have a, a co-host co tonight. Uh, so I've got the open mic, two features, and then the live. So if someone could do that, that would be amazing. All right, so we're gonna go about 30 minutes on the open mic list. We'll bring up our first feature. We'll go back to the open mic list for about 30 minutes and bring up our second feature. We'll finish up the open mic list and go into round two. Round two is off the record. It is not recorded. Features are welcome to come and hang out after hours with us and, uh, and do their own thing. Uh, it is not recorded, it is not live streamed. What happens after hours stays after hours. Uh, but you can't be here if you are watching live. You've got to get your ass to the Zoom room, don't you? So yes. All right. So rules, ground rules for tonight. Uh, this is a live poetry open mic. Anything can happen. Uh, so please take care of yourselves. Uh, uh, trigger warnings are not mandatory, but if you would like to use them, we will champion you in that effort. I do ask that you please uh, take the proper precautions that you need. You can say shit. You can say fucking dick and pussy and all those great words that you want. Yes, uh, we are adults here. Uh, if you have young ones in the house, that is your responsibility, not mine. So please uh, definitely make sure that you're taking care of yourself tonight. Um, while, the, while somebody is up here reading, please mute your mics. I will mute you if uh, if you are loud. So please uh, mute your mics. Uh, but when the when the poets are done reading, unmute, clap, get crazy, get loud, cheer them on. We like to make people feel good here. So we definitely want to uh, be bringing the cheer and the energy and the love between poets tonight. Feel free to drop your socials in the chat. Feel free to drop any events you got going on, any merch, websites, all of that good stuff. Uh, tell people how to find you and drop it in the chat. We want to push up poets. Now, next weekend, <laughs> next weekend, we have uh, Daniel Villegas from New York and Edith Blackbird from Mexico. It's going to be a bilingual open mic. Come on, y'all. You gotta be here. Now, October 22nd, uh, 23rd, excuse me, Saturday, October 23rd, I will be on the road. We'll be doing a pop-up poetry open mic. I will be in El Paso, Texas with PoetCon, Ross Faya, Kemlin Fappy, Urban Cowboy Poet, uh, Donna Snyder. Um, oh my God, Sandy Shakes from LA is gonna be there. Let's go. So many incredible poets. Denise Science is, is, is like, let's just go. Uh, so we'll be doing the live pop-up open mic there. We won't have a double feature. October 30th, getting ready for Halloween. That is our Halloween event. It is our Rocky Horror Poetry Show. And so there are no features other than uh, you. So come, come in costume, come dressed up, come dressed up to play. It is going to be a very, very fun event. And then we roll into November with our Winter 10 Poets who are publishing and all of their features that we're going to be uh, to launching. All right, so. With that being said, anything goes on this mic except for hate speech. If I think you are being a threat to anyone in this room, you will be gone, baby gone, and not allowed back in. That includes the chat. The chat is an extra fun plus thing for you to do. It is the private backdoor chats. Do not exploit that. Do not send threatening messages. I will get you the fuck out of this room quickly. I don't care. I don't mess around like that. 
So I hope everyone feels safe now and happy. We're going to have such a good time. All right. I got on the open mic tonight. I got Levi, Doc, Sydney, Christina, Abraham. I'll kick off the open mic with a brand new poem I wrote. I wrote this last night, in fact, in a Gorilla Poets workshop. It is titled Outside In. I've come home from an expired day. Cannot quite reach around T-Rex arms thrash on my back. Strain to unclasp this bra from my back, back against the wall. I pull at it, yank at it. It yells at me that I will never breathe easy again. I've swallowed myself back down into myself. A measurement of protection, perhaps. Still the scales of my mind slide up and down this wind chime chest, hollowed out beast bones, ribs rip wind into song like naked winter willow trees. Birds perch on the outside of this rib cage. I reach for them as they fly away to some safe space still yet to discover. See, I stockpile sorrows since there is nowhere else to put them, stashed away in place of a heart, treasure chest lungs full of shiny, golden, broken dreams, screaming steam from the kettle of my throat that was strangled quiet so long ago. See, breath is my currency to security. Each word, each roll of the tongue, lick of the lip, volume, cadence, rhythm of survival, inflating my balloon chest and still, I cannot rip off this bra. Get the fuck off me already. I scream out in frustration, tears mount a rescue body, slumps over. Should I give up again? Every night is the same insane struggle to get free. Get out of this body trap, booby trap, trap seedling squirming for sunshine. I toss another shiny, golden, broken dream to the offering of tomorrow. If I even make it that far. Thank you. All right, let's go tonight. It's wow. nice and lubed and warmed up for all of you. <laughs> that was very powerful, Marissa. Awesome. Thank you, Levi. Yeah. All right, I want to give some love to everyone who's in the room tonight. We got Levi Miracles, who just dropped an incredible song. Oh my God, you guys are going to hear from Levi if you have not yet. Uh, we got Abraham Kamani, Chance On is here, Diane Ward, Doc Janning, Frog Corpse, Jenny. Uh, again, and welcome our features, Mary Blenderman and Sam Park. We got Sydney Conte from across the pond, and Thomas Connors in the house. I saw Generalissimo Brian Franco was here, but maybe he got kicked out. So I think he's probably going to be coming back. Hopefully, soon. All right, I got Levi, you're up next. Doc, you are on deck. I will put the list in the chat. If you would like to read, drop your name, please, in the chat. Well, I'm Levi Miracle. I'm hailing from uh, Tucumcari, New Mexico, which is actually about two and a half hours away from Marissa. I haven't actually met Marissa in person yet, but that's going to happen soon, I hope. So um, that should be fun. Uh, I'm going to read one that I published in uh, 2017 in the beautiful space, a journal of mind, art, and poetry. It's by a whole bunch of psychiatrists and doctors um, that created this magazine. And it's entitled The Wall. There's a wall, the gaps between the meaning of my existence and the meaning of existence in general. It's a wall I can't climb, a wall without measure, 
a wall without borders. Because of this wall, it's why I've been blind for so long. It's why I leave the lights on at night. It's why I cover my face with shadow figures, not wanting anything to remember my complexion. It's a wall made up of everything I'm afraid of. Things that make a paper cut throat gush with screams you never knew existed. Things that cause teardrops to not only fall, but instead break the barriers of sanity. Things I don't like to speak of, like how when I was younger, I couldn't differentiate between the same moments and the moments where everything seemed perfect, yet I was a suicide time bomb ticking away as if an alarm were trapped in my wrists, as if a god were dictating from inside my veins, from inside my bones, until I exploded with the questions not never answered until it was too late. These are the things that make my stomach curl into the fetal position until I rebirth new moments of wanting to be alive. These are the moments I can't relive until I can actually live again. This wall, this wall, this wall of terror within my heart will never crumble until I can leave the past in the past and remember that my future is bright. This wall is a concrete resemblance of power, a mountain so planted in my thoughts, it can never be removed, never be consumed by the tsunami of my ambition, never become a path I can easily walk to the other side. It's this wall that keeps me afraid at night keeps me from jumping the fence of my mind to the realm of my reality. It's this wall I can't replace with one easily escapable. It's this wall, this wall I find so unmistakably hard to confront. This wall that has never been moved, never been shaken from my psyche's foundation, never been remembered as anything but a traumatic remembrance, this wall. But every day for the past three years, I found myself staring at the wall, challenging it, whispering ideal chants of hopeful phrases into its core until I'm not afraid anymore. Until I realize borders cannot define my destination, this wall will know I will not bow down again. I will not crumble to its masses or answer the echo calls, bounce off its sides to scream lies into my soul. No, I can now turn the lights off. I can uncover my face from the shadow world and face the wall with unveiled freedom. I will conquer. I will prevail. I will tear down the wall until each piece is nothing but particles of dust on life's shelf. This wall will never again define me. This wall will never again be resurrected. This wall, this wall, this wall. Damn it. I am free. Thank you. <laughs> Levi, miracle, everybody. Unmute your mics, please. Give him a big round of applause. Great and great peace. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we're two hours away from each other. We haven't met yet. Um, <laughs> yeah. We'll get there though, I promise. We will do pop-up open mics um, out there for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. All right. But feel free, Levi, to drop all your stuff in the chat. And you have had that big um, song drop, right? So how can people yeah, find yeah. you and, and, and support that? Uh, well, um, you can pretty much just find me on Facebook under either Levi Miracle or the Poetry and Writings of Levi J. Miracle. I'm also on, on the Poets and Writers database. Um, you can find me there. And then my song, you can find, um, I just won an award actually from the World Songwriting, no, not the World, yeah, World Songwriting Awards. And then um, it also won third place in the International Songwriting Competition. It's won a couple things and yeah, it, it, it just, just aired on our local radio station, um, I think last Friday. 
it's so, it such was, a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so cool. Yeah, and uh, to hear it on the radio for the first time was amazing. And I'm going to be pitching it to radio stations um, uh, in Albuquerque, Amarillo, uh, Clovis, uh, surrounding areas, you know, Gallup, awesome. maybe, I don't know. Awesome. Uh, We're so uh, proud of you. It's so you. exciting, you guys, when you see people in your community rising. It's just so exciting. You've got to champion that stuff. See you rising. <clears throat> and I do apologize if I cough throughout this a little bit here and there. Uh, like I said, I'm coming back from pneumonia. Uh, so uh, don't feel bad for me, please. I've got lots of meds on board and I'm doing okay. Uh, but I do have the intermittent cough. All right. So we got Doc Janning and then Sydney, you are after Doc. And Doc is out of this world, y'all. <laughs> out of this world. Well, in ways I am because uh, the body may be here, but the mind is out there somewhere. I have three forms. I have looked in the eyes of the black wolf spirit. He spoke to me of life, of love, of death in the multiverse. I asked why, he answered because, and I understood. Darshan, silent, argent reflection of sun, silver streaming midnight mangata, star pricked velvet shadows, darshan embrace of moonlight. Meditate on their meaning, accept what they are within, drink deeply of night's wisdom, and dream of what yet may be. And finally, Thoughts of mermaids and dragons. Contemplating the Tao of you, visualizing your glow amid thoughts and afterglow. Thoughts of a mermaid's dance and the dance of dragons on oracle shores of Atlantis. Time and tides of the multiverse bearing bonds of thought and caring converge in a nexus of poetry. My heart found its home amid thoughts of joy and love and visions of other worlds. Songs of us echo among stars and soar through my dreams. Passionate paeans of propinquity. Songs played on galactic strings. Songs of my love. Songs of you. My song of song. Thank you. Oh my gosh, dog. It's almost like you're a poet laureate. <laughs> he is a poet laureate, if you guys didn't know. Yeah, that. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. I'm looking around the room tonight and I'm so excited because there's so many people from all over the world in this room and some of you have never met each other before and that is so exciting for me you got to get out of the plat of platforms and you you know spread the love and this is like a mosaic of some of my favorite people in this room I'm so excited uh doc janning is going to have a book out with us next year along with christina ivy who's reading in a couple of poem poets we're so freaking excited uh the the, the quality of poetry this year i mean because that's one thing covid did for us right covid I, covid brought us i to forgot to mention one thing uh yeah. two weeks yeah no, not two weeks. A, a week from tomorrow is my event, Awa Nights. It's on it's Sunday afternoon, two thirty Eastern time, and Kemlin Tanbapi is my featured reader. Yes, yes, Kemlin is amazing. Uh, you will be blown away. I hope she sings her siren mermaid songs for you too, Doc. Uh, she's fantabulous. Uh, welcome, Catherine Sweeney just walked in the room. She sashayed. Uh, that means advocates close behind, I'm sure. Uh, 
because Diane and Catherine are here and you know <laughs> it's gonna be an advocate sandwich. <laughs> Mariella will be like the steak right in the middle. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're, you look so beautiful tonight, Catherine. It's so nice to see you. Welcome to my, welcome to my house. <laughs> thank you. Um, I haven't right. washed my hair in five days, but thank you. Live streaming <laughs> to everyone. We, we can't smell you. We don't have smell of vision We just have- uh, This is why we love Zoom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, if you would like to uh, drop your name, if you wanna be on the open mic, drop your name in the chat. Uh, this next poet, I am so freaking excited. And I, I oh man, I like, why is my camera lagging? Cause Sydney Conte is, <clears throat> he needs a whole introduction. If you don't know who this poet is, you're gonna know after he's done reading and then we'll all be on the same page. But I met him and I was totally blown away by this by this poet. Like I, I can't eat, let's just, just go Sydney please because they just need to know who you are and experience you. You're amazing. Thank you for that introduction. Um, <laughs> so I'm Sydney. I'm from uh, London. I'm from England, Cambridge. And this is my first open mic I've did in nine months, long time. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> so this is a piece that I call Roller Coaster. I don't go roller coasters. They take you to places that I, you didn't think you'll go. The twist leaving you is passenger, it rises just to fall meaning. It gives you ecstasy just to give you pain. They take energy and time to maintain. Knots and rivets, twists and bends, they break and they all need fixing. Roller coasters have no sense of direction, looping you to where you began, worst of all, seeing people before you. As your stomach plays tornado with butterflies, each one wanting you, sorry, I mean, roller. I get roller coasters, I get you like I get roller coasters, not at all. Like roller coasters, I smile ear to ear like roller coasters. You, roller coasters, both take me on a journey I have some control over, but still, you take me to places I never knew I'll go to. You, us, we, we are not perfect, but we try. See, I don't get roller coasters. I don't like how every rise must lead to a drop and how you, us, we, and no, we are not roller coasters. And we may not drop. And we may not leave this ride, but if we do, I'll remember all the memories captured in photos. Funny, just like a roller coaster. Thank you. Oh, Sydney Oh my God, it's been nine months. You can grow a human in that time. Like, that's a long time, Sydney. Where where can people find you, follow you? What you got going on? What have I got on? Um, quite a lot. So I've got my Instagram, I've got a website, and I have a Patreon. Um, I'll put all the links down below. And I have a few events that I am organizing, which I will put on my socials. Yes, you guys, please follow Sydney. Uh, he, no more nine months. <laughs> like, you don't need any more of, of those, <laughs> those kinds of babies. <laughs> he, the mic needs attention. All right. Uh, the ne next up, we have Christina Ivey. I, am, I met this woman in person a couple times now, and I had the privilege of watching her live slam the mic and I told her I was like you got to come tonight you got to see Sam Park and Mary Blenderman like the, these women are right up your alley and she is uh, in our our women's erotic anthology that is coming out we're doing pre-orders in November it's coming out in December she's got some pieces in this poem in this book uh she is a powerhouse uh slam artist I well I can't I won't put too much pressure on you Christina but she's she's amazing uh please give it up for Miss Christina Ivy, woo! Wait, Dr. Christina Ivy, woo! 
I'm just going by that because it's like I think sometimes in these things like I have enough anxiety that like I need a uh, like a character and for some reason the doctor like I really am a doctor it's not just an ego trip but <laughs> the it's like I have to in call on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I also apologize if I slip out like my zoom keeps going in and out but we're, we're gonna we're gonna try um so yeah so I actually just wrote this poem last week um, and it's for the, the manuscript that uh, Marissa is talking about, or it, at least it will be. Um, so it's called uh, A Witch Falls in Love with Her Looking Glass Self. There's a reason why the witches fall in love with their mirrors in fairy tales. And it isn't the Narcissus fantasy of admiring the way their cheekbones shine in their reflection or how their dimples grow into glorious caverns that swallow up the smiles of all the lost souls who have ever fallen in love with them. And it isn't even how the mirror could shrink their nose down to size, make their warts disappear into the cold you know what miss christina christina the it's getting walky my beautiful eyes. friends we can't no nope. you gotta to hear her like this. watch watch oh my goodness i think we lost her it's the aphorisms <clears throat> Oh, and maybe. how she can always trust. Yeah. Hang on, Christina, we're, we keep losing you in and out, my love. Uh, how about let's do this. Do you want to turn off your video? No, and try... I, knew it. I knew it. That's it. Oh, no. no. It's okay. Do you want to just turn off the video and try doing it with just your, uh, and I, 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 you'll have to re unmute yourself. But if you turn off your camera and you just try to do the poem, with just the mic, that might help you. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's why I oh, warned oh. everybody because like I kept going in and out of those other ones and I was like, oh no. Okay. Um, well, if it does it again, I'm um, if it does it again, um, I'll, I'll ask to feature for the Kai. Coggins Wednesday night poets. And okay. this is actually one of the poems I'm gonna do. So I'll chop. Oh my goodness. Okay, all right, all right, beautiful. So she'll be on Wednesday night, uh the Wednesday night poetry with Kai Coggins. Um we will <laughs> figure it out. I don't have to, I don't have to go. <laughs> If you're okay. setting up, it's fine. I'm so okay. sorry. Do you want me to read um, yeah, it for you? Just, just Do you want let me know if I set up again. <laughs> it, all right. Well, if 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 you maybe try to update your see if the app is updated, that might help. Um man, oh man, I wanted you to hear Christina. I can't even, I could read it, but I can't do Christina. That would be like me trying to read Mary Blenderman. I I I could read it but I would be no good at it. I would not be worthy, right? Uh, and so, yeah, we'll just, we'll just do our best, right? All, your Pandora all your premium session has ended, but all your playlist songs oh, and albums I'm will be waiting for you when you return. Side, Search and play. <laughs> all right. Um, I forgot I was still sharing sound on this other device. All right, thank God that was nothing ridiculous. It's okay. We bring on adversity, right? Bring it on. We know it's going to come. Uh, so here we go. All right. Uh, we're going to break for our first feature tonight. Miss Mary Blenderman. In fact, Mary, please correct me if I'm using your pronouns incorrectly. Uh, because I, I just, I noticed you said her website is in the bio. And so I'm, I'm thinking that your pronouns, but please correct me. I'm not above. Uh, uh, just tell me, tell me if I'm wrong. And I will fix it quickly. All right. <clears throat> Our first feature tonight, uh, Mary Blinderman is a poet, scientist, and mindful, mindfulness practitioner. Her poetry uses the lenses of attention and embodiment to, Im to imagine new horizons for identity, spirituality, and individual 
and collective healing. She lives in Pittsburgh. Her website is maryblenderman.com. That is M-A-R-Y-B-L-E-N-D-E-R-M-A-N-N. Dot com. And um, in lieu, normally we would talk about um, passing the hat around and tipping our features, right? Normally we would say that, hey, there's 18, 20 people in the room. If everyone put a couple bucks in the hat, it would be a very nice pay check for a feature for these poets. So in lieu of monies to Mary, she has put a special request in. And this is what she says. And of course, Mary, <laughs> I, you, you can reiterate it at all you want. I, I promise my friend, say it as many times as you want. Uh, she works with a, a mutual aid group in Pittsburgh called Rice, R-I-C-E, which is uh, River e City Eats. And she would like you to offer, um, if, you, if you like her work, please support them with a small donation. Uh, you can Venmo, the organization at R I C E P as in Paul G as in gorilla H as in horse rice P G H uh, for any of the uh, promotions tonight. Uh, she would greatly appreciate that. That again is River City Eats called Rice in Pittsburgh. That is one of the organizations that is very near and dear to her heart. So in lieu of tips tonight, if you would please make a, a nice donation and support Mary Blenderman tonight. Please unmute your mics. Welcome, Miss Mary. Woo! Woo! Yes, Mary. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marissa. I'm delighted to be here. Before I read, please join me in taking a deep breath in. Please speak up a little bit. And out. I'll try. 80 feet above the world, some clinging in me stilled. The illusion of safety somewhere below the mulch and needles and in its place, the clouds. Fallen low and thick as snow in August over the birches and white pine. The sun hovering at the far edge of the expanse like a peach preparing to burst with nectar. Chill on the breeze, blood on my cheek holding no one's hand, writing only first drafts because everything is unexpected. Maybe if I swear off editing my mistakes, I won't make new ones. In a forest older than war, there is a tree as tall as God. I don't have to know what I want. The morning tastes my skin with a caramel tongue. The hemlocks gather in their branches a damp and glossy scent. Cinnamon and mud and the kind of sex that leaves you breathless, but I'm breathing in silence, holding no one's hand. In, an invisible orchestra shifts in the ferns, then clatters in the treetops as the deer raise the flags of their tails. The illusion of solitude evaporates with the mist. Thank you again for having me and for listening. Um, that poem was called Jamais Vu, which is the opposite of deja vu. Uh, it's the feeling of being somewhere you've been hundreds of times before and all of a sudden it feels like it's your very first time there. Um, I will put all of the requisite information into the chat for you. Uh, there's certainly no pressure to do so, but if you would like to help out uh, Rice, the mutual aid group that I work with, uh, I would be so honored by that. So the Venmo Rice PGH is in the chat for you. Our friends who we help out through that are starting to ask us for things like coats and sleeping bags uh, for the winter. So donations that you send will probably go towards that kind of stuff. And uh, 
let's get out another poem. This is one that I wrote earlier this summer. Love in the desert. I can't believe how gently you ripped the newness from me. Tell me again not to blame you. Love on the airwaves repeating, I'm not a monster. Frantic. Since you're gone, let me admit that in my solitude, I pace across the rug where I lay like an altar, your hips an offering. You were a respite from the shame of my naivete, not its end. We ached at the sunset, sang the colors into each other's mouths, love at the river swinging my hand up the shore, love speaking of who might see us, setting my hand adrift. I thought you came to me wanting to be known. I wanted to burn everything that caged you knowing we lived in a tinderbox. I couldn't have any way, sweetheart. Collective liberation requires individual striving. Smoking out the nightmares, the match, the potential of a spark, then conflagration. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here on the internet. You can go, Mary, for 20 minutes if you would like. If you want to keep reading, you can keep reading. If you don't, that's okay too. But you have plenty of time, my friend. Thank you so much, Marissa. I do have a few more poems. I think I'm just, I'm better at the words when I write them down first. So the, the talking in between part <laughs> is new but yeah I'll, I'll keep going um yeah I, I have another one here um this was one that i wrote about uh airports um what a what a weird space in so many ways especially as a, a gender non-conforming person um so the title of this poem is self-portrait as liminal space I have tucked myself for safekeeping in the space between the word sir and the uncertain turn of my head. The space between my body and the approval my body needs to be a passenger, rather than a sock-footed shadow sinking backwards into the strange gray chamber after admonishing the blank-faced agents to press the pink button this time imagining myself as the outline on the wall. Hands lifted to protest my innocence. I understand. My womanness is contraband I have strapped close to my chest. I used to think even my name was indecisive. Bitter in one language, ocean in another. But now I know the bitterness of holding more than my horizons how easily people reject what they cannot comprehend. When the woman in the airport bathroom glimpses the hard edge of my hair in the mirror, she looks away and wonders aloud to the paper towels if she is in the men's room. I have a question too. What does it mean to be brave in this body? Surely not to shrink to the size of an assumption which is what I am doing. My throat too tight to tell her the truth. I do not hate my chest. I do not hate my hips. I just love the curves of my voice the most. When we are launched skyward, no one rebukes the clouds for their natural vastness, the way they linger in between earth and universe, the way they look both soft and furious their constant refusal to take only one shape. I haven't, uh, I haven't been in an airport in a while, but 
getting better at looking for uh, those single use restrooms. I like those. Before I read the next one, I'll just tell you all what I've, uh, what I've taken to telling my students every week. Um, I'm teaching this semester and we're, we're back in person and uh, it's, but we're all wearing masks. So it's like still really weird and hard for a lot of them, I think. So at the beginning of every class, I just say, I hope you all are doing well. And uh, if you're not doing well, I hope that you're talking to someone about it. Um, it's, it's super fine to not be okay. I just, I hope you have someone to talk to. So I hope that's, I hope that's true for you too. Um, a lot of my poems feel like run on sentences to me. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of take a breath with a shorter one, um, which is actually literally a run on sentence, <laughs> at least it's short. Uh, this is called Litany for a New Apartment. The last Christmas before I unfurled the crumpled flag of my heart, and staked claim to an island I had yet to explore. I went down to the basement in the house I had stopped calling home, so it would hurt less if they didn't let me come back. And for the same reason, rifled through albums and boxes, removing any picture I had made or smiled in, wanting to remember the daughter we all thought I would be, myself included. I don't even think that poem has a metaphor in it. I think it's just what happened. I never realized that. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, one of, yeah, I try, Catherine. <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> uh, one of the fun things about getting to read a whole bunch of poems in a row is that you can just kind of shift the mood, uh, however. So the mood is going to shift. I'm just letting you know, but I think you'll like it. Um, this is called, If You Tell a Dream Backwards, It Becomes a Magic Spell. Seven, we are understanding planets laughing at the necessary ephemerality of our conjunction. Six, your body succulent, jump rope spine beating a groove into the bed, drink like a butterfly, scream like a bee. Five, my head bowed between my shoulder blades at the altar of your thighs, if there's one thing church taught me, it's how to worship. Four, naked we are a jigsaw puzzle inside a kaleidoscope, breathing ritual from your skin, cinnamon, sage, salt. You ask if you can unbind me. I am a pile of pages in your hands. Three, you are a wave breaking on my kitchen counter. I crest your hips until you engulf me. I surface drenched. Two, I forget about independence wrapped in the arms of the beat. This hypnotic groove holding me, holding on. In the dream, I stay at the house party long enough to find you there. I am real wherever you touch me. Thank you. That, uh, that was a fun one to write. I think that I wrote it around the time of uh, 4th of July. Um, so the, the word independence was on, on my mind, but then it, it became a different thing. Uh, so I, I hope you enjoyed it.
So, uh... The next one I have to read is uh, another mood shift. Um, and I just want to let you know before I read it that it deals pretty straightforwardly with disordered eating. Um, so please take care while, while listening. Um, it doesn't mention any specific foods or numbers, uh, just as a, an FYI. The title of this poem comes from a piece by Marty McConnell. Um, that if anyone is interested, I'm happy to link you to. It's it's pretty awesome on its own. But the, the title of this piece is a line from that piece, and it is, And you are not stupid. Last night, I was a statue on the sidewalk while five rabbits feasted on somebody's front lawn, content in their chewing, soft bellies stretching in ruminated half hops toward the next mouthful. This marvel, some animals survive without apologizing. There's a lost boy in Neverland who looks like me. I'm subsisting on pixie dust, trying to get light enough to fly back there and tell him when I see him in the mirror, I know he's thinking of me. There's a clock ticking like a bomb in my stomach. I know exactly how long it's been. I'm a snowman anxious for spring. I'm going to dig an escape tunnel with an empty spoon. The world shrinks to the size of my stomach when my stomach is empty. The sound of hunger is a headache of static at full volume. At least there's no airtime for reruns of all my mistakes and the punches I took thinking they were kisses. The brain, a patient blade, a stubborn compass. No doubt when St. Catherine of Siena refused everything but the Eucharist, it felt like devotion to be so consumed. All my false hopes are kidnapped by facts. Restriction is a biological trigger for binging. Any sense of hollow brilliance is a star on the verge of collapse. The supernova always becomes the black hole. I can't become light enough to escape. My body is a cosmic survival machine. Last night, I sat on the grass and watched tiny girls float upside down in the palms of their men, and I dreamed of becoming an astronaut doing handstands on the moon, waving to the mermaids in their distant lagoon. If not for gravity, I'd already be gone. Thank you for hearing that and, uh, and holding space for that. I think that was one of the more difficult pieces that I've written. Um, and it means a lot to me to be able to, to share it and some of the conversations that I've had with people about it have um, been really meaningful to me. So, um, yeah, I, I, I should say the, the way to get in touch with me, I'm supposed to tell you this, the way to get in touch with me is that if you go to my website and you click on the button that says get in touch, you can do a very old fashioned thing and send me an email and then I can respond to it. Um, and that is how to get in touch. You can't follow me anywhere else. Um, so that's, that's it. But if you want to tell me how anything that I read tonight made you feel, or if you just want to say hi, I love hearing from people. Um, and that's how to do it is to go to my website and uh, send me an email. So now you know. All right, um, Marissa, how am I doing on time? Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone really cares about the time. I'm just saying. Um, I think that you can read plenty more if you <clears throat> would like plenty, meaning like, you know, if you want another five minutes, you want another 10 minutes. I think we're all okay with that. The list is very short tonight. So I'm totally okay with giving the features some extra time tonight. I don't think anyone's gonna have a problem with you guys having some extra time tonight. 
So you I just, mean, I would say, I would say within, oh, Avery, hang on, hang on. I would say, I would say, you know, keep it within 10 minutes and you and Sam can have 30 minutes. I'm totally okay with that. Absolutely. Let's go. Okay. So what I'm gathering from this is that I've already hit 20 minutes and that Marissa is very polite. <laughs> well, no, I, I don't, I don't actually keep you guys on time. I, I don't like rules. I break the rules. Um, so I, I never keep a clock on anyone. Uh, I really don't. And it and more is like how the room is going, how the list is going. And the two of you are so beloved in this community. There is no way that they're going to say, cut her at 20. And I have no idea. I mean, all the only thing I know is what time I started the first person on the open mic list. That's the only thing that I wrote down the time for. <laughs> um, and so please feel free wherever you're comfortable in the next five to 10 minutes. If there's a, a point where you want to break or you want to get to that point to be able to break, you can do that without any sort of restrictions. Well, so we're just on punk time uh, is what some of my friends would call that. Uh, you know, time is a capitalist bullshit, but okay. Um, so, well, I had picked a poem to end on and I'm, I'm delighted to end on it because I, I wrote it uh, over the summer when I was kind of keeping a practice of writing outside in the mornings when it was like, that was one of the only times of day when it was cool enough to go outside. <laughs> um, and just really, really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll end on this. And I, I guess before I'll, um, I, I read, cause I'll, I'll just be done after I read it. I'll, I'll just say again, thank you uh, to Marissa for having me and to all of you for, uh, your attention. Um, the the people who listen are in every way as important as the people who read and maybe more so. Um, you you really are holding space and you make a difference. Um, if if you want to donate to Rice uh, and send some energy towards the work that I do, I would love that. And uh, please only do that if your food and rent is taken care of. Um, mutual aid means you take care of yourself first. Uh, so I want that for you. And uh, yeah, if you want to reach out, I'd love to hear from you. This is called Obad with Doubts. Dear Aaron, I keep waking up ravenous and eating the sunrise for breakfast. July always makes me think of you. I've got this modest aspiration each morning to transcend rationality letting my stomach growl its way toward metaphorical enlightenment. I'd like to have a translucent body like the stained glass leaves of these trees, becoming the holiness they witness, glowing gold vermilion. The fence sitters are asking me questions, the robins, the squirrel, the tiny brown sparrow not five feet from me who with the sun rising behind him could be a messiah. Who knows? You and your raised eyebrows, your deliberate shrug. Agnosticism, the certainty of what we cannot know. I'm thinking of you because my beliefs are throwing darts with their eyes closed. I'd like a church for every day of the week or none at all. I told my students yesterday that we use science to approach reality not mentioning that humans are doomed to subjectivity. I should apologize for the epistemological strictures of personhood, but instead I ascribe the qualities of disciples to the trees, name the clouds a cream and lavender ship in the sky. You led me here. A cardinal alights on the fence, then furies away. I used to sneak out a mass like that, hovering at the edges of holiness. The road to heaven is paved with guilt. I can't touch heaven, but studying the fraying sun snagged on the ragged clouds, I do wonder about a city with no morning. What would I wake up for? A hawk overhead. There is always more to do. How many times I kissed your name instead of your mouth. I always dance around what I really mean but I believe that without you, none of these poems would have been written. That I sit in the dawn with my stomach growling because I am awake. 
that you will keep. Since Mary always begins her sets with a, a breath in and out, I think we should finish her set with a breath in and out. Contrary to pop popular belief, Mary, I do practice a lot of mindfulness. Uh, I've endured quite a bit of trauma in my life and, um, and I do, uh, do a lot of self-meditation. <laughs> so yes, I am loud and get it very excited and bring high energy to the mic, but I do know how to come back to center. And I, I'm, I am, I do apologize for starting it so loud <laughs> for you tonight. Uh, but can we, can we get loud now? Are we good? Can we do that? Can we get loud for you now? So unmute your mics, please. Give it up for Mary. I was still, I was still. Mary, you're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard her speak in months. So it's incredible. Always, always, wow. always incredible. Incredible. Would it, would it be okay with you, Mary, if I use um, what, a line that you said tonight in a writing prompt in a workshop? Um, you said, what does it mean to be brave in this body? I would love to use that as a writing prompt in a workshop. And of course, we will, we will call it you know, our, our Mary Blenderman workshop or our Mary Blenderman line. And I'll give you full credit for that line. Would that be okay to use that line in a workshop? Will you send me an email, Marissa, just so I can give you some information about the poem, but certainly, yes. Absolutely, yes. I don't have, a, I just, I'm gonna make it now because the line tonight, right? Uh, we, we find people who inspire us and, and yes, I have it written down. Um, as Sam Zane is coming in, <clears throat> too bad he missed you it was not here on time so remember please in lieu of you know with sending the hat around 20 people in the room instead of putting a couple dollars in the hat for mary if you could please um send donations to river city eats uh also uh, called rice it's a um one of the places that she works with and and, and works to <clears throat> do um helping um I don't know, I can't even, I can't even, it's a mutual aid group in Pittsburgh. I can't even explain, Mary, I will not do it justice, but the Venmo. Can I just like say a thing about what yes, I kind of Yes, yes, please. To... And the Venmo and the Venmo and all that stuff where people can make donations. Okay, I'll, I'll put it in the chat again. Um, just, I have the whole, I have the whole thing here. So here's my, uh, my website and uh, the rice stuff, um, the Venmo. So the Venmo is rice PGH. So very briefly, Rice is a mutual aid group. Uh, it's just a group of friends. It's non-hierarchically organized. Uh, once a week, we do a distro in a local park. Uh, anyone who comes by is welcome to get food, clothes, shoes, um, Narcan and other uh, like medications. Um, so we there's kind of like a harm reduction aspect to it. Um, and we really try to go off of like what people tell us that they need. So like I said, right now people are asking for coats and sleeping bags. So we're trying to source some of that stuff, but like throughout the year, those things shift. Um, and kind of part of the mutual aid model is trusting people to know their own needs um, and then kind of trying to connect them with the resources that they're asking for. So we kind of try to, to bridge that gap. Um, and the way that Rice obtains resources means that even a small amount of money goes a long way. Um, so like five or $10 is a huge contribution towards like making a weekly meal happen, for instance. Um, so yeah, that's a, a group that means a lot to me and where I, I put my energy. So if, if you enjoyed my work, uh, you're welcome to donate to rights. And that's it. I wish that organization um, would be here. It's um, desperately needed in New Mexico. Uh, so yeah, if, if they ever branch out, the Southwest would be a great place to branch out to. Uh, thank you so much, Mary Blenderman. Mary Blenderman, everybody. Oh my God, I'm so fangirly. You have no idea. Um, <clears throat> I will snail mail carrier pigeon communication with you all day. Let's go. Uh, I don't need Facebook or Instagram to be able to find Mary Blenderman. I can find her the old fashioned way. You guys got to go to her website, maryblenderman.com with two N's and, and email her. <clears throat> so 
couple of uh, quick announcements. Don't forget at the Word is Right, almost every day of the week, there is a, a live open mic or a workshop to go to. Sundays, we have Speak Up Sundays with Doma Beth. Uh, the first and third um, Monday afternoon, we have Cafe Generalissimo with our very own Generalissimo, Brian Franco, who's in the room tonight. And then we're toggling that with uh, the second and fourth Mondays, the Moist Mondays erotic open mic. So this Monday in two nights, uh, Kapoa Conras Baya, who is also known as the Fishnet Poet, she and I will be doing the Moist Mondays erotic open mic and we're featuring Nepal Flower from Instagram. Tuesdays, uh, Quixotic Queers with Ma Dukes. We got Wednesdays, Poetry with Nick P and he's gonna be switching every other week with uh, a workshop by Ron Mark Thompson. Thursdays, we have Thinking Through Thursdays with Blue La Poetess and Lonnie Quinones, and that is a mental health forward day of the week for poetry, and they will be toggling with MD Live. The last Friday of the month, we have Ray Jane, freestyle with Ray Jane right here on The Word is Right. We're going to be bringing other things on Friday nights in between. We have our Cash Slam coming up <clears throat> the first uh, weekend of November the Grand Slam in December. If you want to try to make some extra cash, it's so, so, so much fun. We have our Halloween event next weekend. If you missed it, Daniel Villegas and Edith Blackbird will be here from, uh, from Mexico. Edith is here from Mexico. It'll be a, be a bilingual open mic. Luciana, you should be here. Spit some Portuguese. It's going to be amazing. All right, so we're getting back to the open mic list. Welcome everyone who came in the room uh, during our feature. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Terry Rose Jertson is here. Miss Poetica is here. I saw Asan Zane is here. Uh, Generalissimo, welcome everyone who uh, is, is now with us. If you would like to read, put your name in the chat. I will get you. I got Abraham Kamani, Chanson, Frog, Diane Ward, Miss Zane, and Miss Poetica on the open mic. We will break in there at some point to bring in our second feature, Sam Park. But for now, here we go. Abraham Kamani is back. Hey, hey, hey. So glad your voice is getting better and better. And, you know, I'm pretty sure you'll be a hundred percent in no time. Sam, I haven't heard you in a minute. Mary, dope shit as always. Uh, so I'm gonna share a piece that I wrote about three weeks ago for the New York thing, which was pirate. And I had a little bit of trouble thinking about how I'm gonna write a poem that relates to a pirate. And then I remembered I went to a high school whose mascot was the pirates. You know, I went to Paramount High School out here in Paramount, California from 1999 until I graduated in 2003. So the title of this piece is called Life as a Black Pirate at Paramount High School. From 1999 to 2003, I attended a high school that was full of pirates, most of whom were brown, 75% to be exact. Black pirates constituted 15%. White and yellow pirates were few and far between. My first year as a pirate was the worst. As one of only four black pirates and the only black male pirate in my language arts class, I was verbally and physically harassed on a daily basis by brown pirates who tried to rob me of my dignity and respect with every insult and object thrown at me. Pencils, pens, erasers, papers, books, crayons, coins, and tennis balls. Even one of the brown pirates referred to me as a black piece of shit. Of course, out of retaliation, I dropped fuck you bombs, bitch bombs, whole bombs, gay bombs, among other bombs, hoping to completely destroy their ego ships, to verbally emasculate them like they were trying to do to me. One day after language arts class ended, some brown pirate threw a rock and hit me in the back of the head. I asked, who threw the rock? No response. I asked again, who threw the fucking rock? One of the brown pirates said, I did. We got in each other's faces, pushing and shoving. Before I took off my backpack, rolled up my sleeves, he handed over his binder and school books to his fellow brown pirate homeboy. We squared off and fought. After exchanging several blows to no effect, he landed a hook shot to my jaw 
knocking me down. But I quickly got up and continued to throw hook shots, connecting with his head and eyes. While he was landing shots on my ribs, he threw one last hook to my face, but missed before the teachers intervened, broke up the fight, and sent us to the office. My counselor asked me if I had problems, why did I not tell him? I told him it was necessary for me to take matters in my own hands. I was placed on in-house suspension. He received a five-day suspension for starting the fight. The next day, one of his brown pirate homeboys acted like he was going to hit me with a skateboard. He laughed and said he didn't think I had enough balls to get down. Unfortunately, the size of my black pirate balls did not stop the brown pirates from verbally and physically harassing me for another three months. Until one day, when we were watching the West Side Story, another brown pirate threw a piece of paper covered with scotch tape, scotch tape and hit me on the side of my head. I threw it back and hit him in the eye. The other kids told him I was crazy and would kick his ass after class. He said, I would not do shit, that he would fuck me up when class ended. We went outside with him behind me talking shit. After gently shoving me twice, I took off my backpack, turned around and started swinging on him. I lost count of how many times I hit him before he fell with me on top of him, continuing to land punches on his face until security guards broke up the fight. When I came back to Ben, I saw him lying in a pool of his own blood. I later learned that I broke his nose and busted the blood vessels in both his eyes. The police were going to arrest me and charge me with assault and battery had he not admitted to starting the fight. Luckily, I was suspended for one day. He did not return to school for two weeks. It was the last time a pirate of any color verbally or physically harassed me during the duration of my life as a black pirate at Paramount High School. End of the piece. Damn. Wow. Abraham, come on. And you got the kids in the background. <laughs> it like adds to the, the, the drama, right? The, the sound of the kids in the back. Is, oh, is, no, I'm in a lodge, man. The kids are, you know, there's some kids uh, outside in the neighborhood. Oh, okay. Well, the lodge, there's right? kids in the background yeah. and it, it lends itself to the drama. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, actually, that was the last fight I've been to. I haven't been in a fight in over 20 years. So <laughs> hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> hopefully it stays that way. Just uh, <laughs> yeah, awesome. Where where can people find you, Abraham? Uh, I have two Instagram accounts. The most, you know, the one I use most of the time is the Righteous Poet, spelled W R I T E O U S. And the other one I just opened up a few days ago, so I will be posting more things on there as soon as I can. It's called Black Scholar Poet. So that's more for research based poems I do in the field of African American studies. Awesome. Awesome. You know, we're going to be doing an anthology. We're collaborating on an anthology, um, a, a Black Fathers anthology. So I'll let oh, you know sure. when that happens, when that comes out. I think you, would be, you should submit for that. Um, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll submit a couple of pieces already once, once you give me the information. You know, I think I've shared them here about leaving Kenya and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Those I would definitely submit to you and, you know, feel free to offer some feedback on them. Yeah, know. if you want me to look at poems, I'll look at poems for you. No problem. All right, no problem. All right. All right, we're going to keep rocking this open mic. I got Chance on, Frog, Diane Ward, Ms. Zaney, Miss Poetica. Are we ready? Anyone else who wants to get on this list, you uh, you can either get in here on round one or you can roll into round two. Round two, so far I got Sydney Conte. And anyone else who wants to get in round two, remember round two is off the record. We turn off the live, we turn off the recording, and we just uh, have a, a space, a space with poets. And features are welcome to come back and read in round two as well. That's no problem. All right, Chance on, you ready? Frog, you are on deck. I, I'm always ready. Um, so since you since you gave me the challenge of writing another haiku, I wrote um, six more after that. Um, 
four or five more after that. But all right, so I have six haikus to share. Haiku from old Mexico. Let's mm, old Mexico. Let us just renovate it. Make Mexico's new. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <coughs> <laughs> this is funny shit because everyone comes to new mexico and says what about old mexico it's like the oldest running no one goes to new york and says where's the old york do they <laughs> no no one goes to you know new jersey and says where's the old jersey no but they come in new mexico and if they can even fight first of all we are part of the 50 states yes we are Americans. Yes, we speak English too. Yes, we are. We are here between Texas and Arizona and New Mexico. Um, so yes, we are part of USA. And no, there's no old Mexico. We're all old Mexico, really, if you think about it. But yeah, so chance on fuck it. Can you read that again, please? I I gotta hear it again. All right, from old Mexico. Let us just renovate it. Make Mexico's new. Haiku. My poetry crush oozes sexy from her pores. She's such a wordsmith. Haiku. Take my breath away. Let me feel life in your kiss if we were in love. Haiku. Bath and body works. Each scent me reminds me of you. Please let me sniff you. And Marissa, this this new haiku, this haiku right here is 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 yours right here. Okay. When she says pussy, she makes it sound like dessert, baked to perfection. Yes, it is dessert. It's absolutely dessert. Oh my god. All right, yes. I know, I know. I got one more. Keep going. Makes me want to sing. Beautiful movements on air. Just like life with you. Thank you. Oh, Chanson. Y'all, if, if you if you don't know who this poet is, like if you're not familiar with Chanson Bird, <laughs> I gotta tell you, right? We were messing around. This is why you gotta be in the after hours party. We're messing around in the after hours party, a whole bunch of us. And he's like doing this haiku thing. And I was like, you know, chance on, <clears throat> you should break the Guinness Book of World Records for haiku. Cause I don't do anything right. I don't do anything normal. I always say shit that's like way out of the box, right? <laughs> then we come back the next week and we're like, well, well, how many is that really, right? And so I look and I research how many you need to break the Guinness Book of World Records for most haiku. It was like 10,300 or something. And I said, you can do that. <laughs> I'm not writing it, right? <laughs> so he starts, he's like, okay, I'll do it. So he starts writing, he starts writing, he starts writing. And I was like, you know what, Chance on, you know, it'd be so much cooler than breaking the Guinness Book of World Records with 10,300 haiku. If you broke the Guinness Book of World Records with 11,111 haiku. I mean, if you're going to go 10,000, you might as well go 11,000. And so he's on his way. He he broke, what, you already broke 1,500, right? Yeah, well, well, actually, I broke 1,600. I'm at 1,619 right now. He's at 1,619 haiku already. You're like, you're 13% you're, you're of the way there. That's just ballpark math. But yeah. you're close. You're, you're getting there. So that's the idea is that he, it is his goal is, and we broke it down to what that would <laughs> look like for books. <laughs> like 11 volumes, 11, I think it's 11 different books. Well, we, we could probably do it into 10 and just release them um, every six months, just release a new volume. Uh, but that, that's that's the journey that Chance on Bird is taking. For those of you who are not familiar, where can people I'm find sorry. you? Chance on, can you repeat the pussy haiku again? <laughs> Gee, it's because he said dessert, isn't it? What the heck do you care about that? Okay. Um, when she says pussy, it's she funny. Makes I want to hear that. But she, he's saying it. Now you guys start over, Chance on. The first line. The second line, the third line. When she says pussy, 
she makes it sound like dessert baked to perfection. Thank you. Baked to perfection. Yes. That's hot. All right, we're gonna keep. So Chanson, where can people find you, follow you, all that good stuff? Um, you can follow me on um, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube at Soul Inc. Speaks, and on uh, Facebook, Chanson Antonio Bird. Um, I also have a link tree, which I'll post in the chat um, with my books. And I'll be um, guest hosting with the Forever Seven on this coming Monday. Um, when I get the information, I'll put that down. Awesome, awesome. All right, yeah, you guys go go follow each other. <clears throat> welcome, uh, MD Live is in the room tonight. Welcome, welcome, MD Live. If you would like to read, Romar Thompson is in the house now as well. Welcome, Romar Thompson. All right, I got Frog. I got Diane, Ms. Zaney, and Ms. Poetica. If anyone would like to be on this first round list, let me know. If you'd like to be on the second round list, let me know. Uh, we're gonna go uh, probably a, a couple more. We'll break at Diane. We'll bring Sam up and, uh, and we'll bring her up for that feature. Are you ready, Frog? Check, check. Can you hear me? Can you hear yes. me? Can you hear me? Yes, we got you. Fucking new phone time, awesome. Uh, this one's called Rainfall. I loathed the wind on days were dreary, reminded alone of her in spirit. Silence abound, stirred, lamented, a bastion of my own bereavement. Air thus howled in dark and calm, I dreamt her distance as my own. A fickle heart under gloomy clouds, the birds hath sang the morning sound. I fought the day, I fought the yawn, from waters poured on garden lawn. Her image paced within my mind, no spring could drown a lover's cry. And perchance I happened to grasp a breath. This lover died, sentenced to death. The current comes on Friday's storm, sprig and leaf. Lovers torn, uprooted from this watered town, a hole was left where thoughts were found, and as the breeze moves through mist, sway alone to dream a lover's kiss. And this short one is called, actually, I think this one actually is the first one I ever read that I introduced you guys to me to at Haven. This is a creepy fucking one, and this is called A Feast for the Ferns. Creeping vines that wrap my arms, drag me along the trail. It's pulling me in beyond its hedges. I greet madness as a friend. The old autumn leaves, withered, decayed, grab me toward the mirth. Into the plants I dive face first in the sullen shades of dirt. Break my bones and bend my body. I wriggle, twitch, and lie. The deeper I go, roots to grow, feeding these trees alive. Under I rest below sown seeds. My skin is now a blanket where moss crawls and ferns slew sprawl. Now I'm nature's banquet. Thank you. <laughs> and he's gone as fast as he got here. Frog, do you have any announcements? Anything that you want to tell uh, anyone? Tell people yeah, how to follow um, you. You can follow me at Frog Corpse right now um, on Instagram mostly because I take photographs too, or you can hit me up on Facebook. Um, I talked to my buddy Vitali that's working on my poetry book right now. He sent me another picture. Um, he's talking to his friend right now that's doing my cover book or is going to do my cover. He's an artist also from Russia by the name of Anton Semenov. So um, Anton and Vitaly are gonna <clears throat> link up together to make art history. Awesome. And it's gonna be beautiful. I love you. Thank you guys so much. Wow, Frog, frog Corpse, everyone. Again, another soul who is irreplaceable Woo. in this community. Please unmute your mics, give them a big round of applause. Woo. Yes, the brevity of that was so fun and intense. <laughs> Yeah, Frog it needs an entire feature here because you, you got to have 20, 30 minutes of him to really immerse into his brain. All right, uh, next up we have the beautiful Diane Ward and then we'll bring up our second feature tonight, Sam Park. On the list tonight, I have Ms. Zaney, Ms. Poetica, Thomas Connor, and Ron Mark Thompson. If I miss an MD Live, I'm putting you on here just because I say. Uh, so if anyone else would like to read in this first round who is not, on the list, please let me know. Otherwise, unmute your mics. Give a big round of applause for Diane Ward, everybody! Woo! 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was so happy to be a feature uh, for Marissa last week, and it was wonderful and <laughs> I had a lot of fun. We all had a lot of fun. And I'm just so happy to see Mary uh, again. And of course, my wonderful Sam. So it's, it's so nice to reconnect. I was going to read something else, but I think I've, I've decided I've changed what I was going to read in the course of this, because I love the fact that Mary always starts us off with a breath, you know, to try to center ourselves, because we deal with so many different things, emotions, feelings, everything that rocks us, right? So it always comes back to centering, all right? And so this is called grace. A light that shone in spite of fear, a moment respite from anger or torture is grace. A breath, now it is rather a chance to breathe in and out at one's leisure is grace. Ah, sense and acknowledge the soft winded sound of my lungs, forcing air over my nostrils is mindfulness grace, provoking, daring, and reminding me to aspire and seek grace. The moment of rest and reprieve, the sanctity of long friendships that test limits of patience because there are no limits with true friends is grace. The bellows that soften when you are around, the safety one feels without a sound, knowing I want to stay within you and you around me is grace. Oh, the joy of clarity in the moment amongst confusion is grace. Grace, I want to keep and tether to your silent trust. Become fearless to new possibilities and acquire the sanctity of our future moments together. A moment of grace is finite and infinite. In my hopes, grace never leaves me, but seems to rest elsewhere sometimes. Grace is an aspiration that turns me into an inspiration as it fuels me towards you, I hope, with goodness. Grace is hypnotic if I let her, and I want to succumb to her. I hope she will bless me with her presence again soon. Thank you. Yes, Diane Ward, everybody! Unmute your mics, please. Give her some love. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful piece, beautiful piece, Diane. Thank you. Yeah, that was awesome. Your feature was awesome. And Ashley, I was so glad and honored that she was able to do it with you. Uh, sometimes these new green up and coming poets, you pair them with people like Diane Ward. And man, it's something that they'll remember the rest of their life. You know, it's so exciting. So speaking of things, we're going to remember the rest of our life. Our second feature tonight. Oh my God, I'm like so fangirling. Uh, I'm so, so, so excited. I've been, I booked this. This was, I booked this so long ago. <laughs> and I've been waiting. I'm like, it's in October yet. Like, we can't just get to October. And then I like blink and it's October. Where did the fall go? Where did the summer go? Right. 
All right. Um, and I am going to be in New York City in July for the New York uh, Poetry Festival. Uh, I will be there with all the books that we've been, we're going to be publishing and we're going to be launching. And so I really do truly hope that I get to meet so many of you when I come up there. Oh, I'm going to be so excited. Uh, so definitely Sam Park. There was no other person I could have um, feature with Mary Blenderman. These two women are, have just changed the way I think that a lot of us think about poetry. And I would not be able to know them if it wasn't for COVID. So inadvertently, fuck you, but thank you, COVID. Um, and thank you so much for being unapologetically you, Sam and Mary. Let me read uh, Sam's bio. And you better just put your fucking seatbelt on and just, just hang on, right? There is, there's no release waiver to be signed. You just have to hang on. Sam Park is a Korean American poet based in Brooklyn, New York. Since writing her first spoken word poem during the pandemic, she has shared her work in various spaces throughout New York, such as the Norican Poets Cafe, Brooklyn Poetry Slam, as well as in several virtual open mic communities across the country. Her poetry has also been published in an anthology of poems titled Love Letters to Gaia and in Mixed Mag, an online publication that centers the work of creative of creatives of color. Please welcome up to the mic, Miss, Miss Sam Park, everybody! <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Woo! It's so lovely to be here. Um, Marissa, thank you so much for asking me to perform. It, oh my goodness, it made me so excited. And you're absolutely right. The time went by so fast, but at the time I was just like, oh my goodness, I'm definitely not gonna have anything going on. <laughs> <laughs> but I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much for asking me. Um, and also wanted a side note. Um, so I work at Greenlight Bookstore in Brooklyn, New York. I'm the store manager there now. And um, when you're talking about the poetry festival, I might be working that also. So if you would like any help, I would love to help you as well like oh my gosh yes and you know there's six, six new new poets uh getting published for yeah. this this next round so we should totally hook up their books in the bookstore yeah totally i got i got the plug i got you okay. <laughs> all right folks um i have a few poems for you tonight um this first one i wanted to start off with something pretty relaxing <laughs> meditative this is Dead Man's Float. The Dead Man's Float involves the complete surrender to a wave and its pull, as if to say that after death, the water that I am made from will instinctively obey the commands of the moon. And I was born with the memory of each ripple that pulls in every direction to return me back to my maker. I was birthed from sheer tidal force. I crash against myself sometimes by disturbing the ebb of my purpose but in my resolute stillness, I can escape submergence and wash up onto the shore. Sheltered in self safe sand, like worn down abalone shell. I am light, but I am protected. I am guided when I am still. I am full of life despite how it appears on the surface. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, this next poem was actually something that I wrote at work at Greenlight <laughs> when there's plenty of downtime for a bookseller. <laughs> this is Sidewalk Symmetry. Street stoplight red to cross a pair fast walks woman after man again a dog walks its owner and a stranger and a stranger match their steps with no second guessing maybe it's monday or mania maybe it's just god one of using and then passing time i watch a street synergy so i can describe it but 
who am I to claim the stories of the poems I see? I'm just an artist observing from the center stage degree. A construction worker strolls straight into the danger zone. Someone misses the sign they wait for since they're on the phone and so many people with other people but still looking alone and then there's an open window when the suspicion of storms are over and done and someone running far from something but not what they run from the lone magnolia tree snows another spring shower has begun eyes wander freely as i stand on the other side of the sun through a window through pain with books and only one pen and paper i watch the world watching me back I'm a face framed with street art and a stack living outside while inside on break always, unless there is a customer who dares interfere with the stories I write in my head, inside dissociations or daydreams, but it is my duty to daze at today from this Brooklyn book dealer's desk. Thank you. Um, this next poem, um, I've taken a habit of really just like observing and writing in the moment. So this one I wrote um, in Central Park and the title is 96th and Broadway. I sat in Central Park and found a bench reserved for the honor of a ghost that favored this view enough to claim it. I see why it is so desired. There's a lake on this part of the island framed with autumn leaves and colorful pedestrians that have the privilege of walking through before and after work and other whereabouts. From this bench, the water in the lake is never still but somehow stays in the same place. The leaves die but leave their skeletons to find their home again in the spring. People pass through and pass judgment and then pass on, but this land is not ours. We're its. All right. This next poem I've written as a tribute to my late grandmother. It's called Common Ground Harmony, which is grandma in Korean. Ten days after I obtained my degree, God said you no longer had to be on earth for me, but you made sure to leave the light on as you went to fill one of heaven's vacancies. Spirit said you could finally lie down after walking a lifelong race that it was time to rest your feet for a moment of grace before you'd finally walk with God at the same time in the same place. And as I lay roses upon your grave, I swore that you'd always live in my heart space. A year later, I visited you again, pouring soju and leaving flowers to commemorate the end of your human body so you could gain the wings to God send me your laughter and your light as a means to defend. Your spirit is too big for a burial plot. So you found home in the divinity of my sacred thoughts. I feel privileged to live with the wisdom that you taught. Maybe that's the light I saw when I saw the cardinal you brought, but I knew it was you, my cardinal angel I sought. It was your time to rest before another sunrise. And the reason for loss is divine compromise, but you lived like you were already given a prize and I want to let you know it's your spirit I epitomize. I miss you every day, sometimes more than I realize, but I see you in my soul when I look into my inherited eyes. So instead of laying flowers on your grave once a year, 
I remember you every day and I persevere. And for all the gratitude in the world I want to give, the common grounds I can find, Harmony, is to honor you as I live. <clears throat> Thank you. Right, this next poem I wrote on, in a fit against body image issues. <laughs> um, yeah, I shook my pen like my sword and this is what came out. <laughs> Pretty privilege. They displaced my worth to the likeness of my skin, my cheekbones, my hips, but not the likeness within my mind, my giving, my affinity to forgive other sin without expecting reparations of the battle they threw me in. At first I starved and wore myself thin, casting crowns to appearance without substantial wins, weighing legacy on vanity as if it was guaranteed to my kin when being known for physical beauty would only result in being a has-been. As my skin decays, my spirit bears the fruits of my character and the resilience toward any pursuit so I can harvest ripe wisdom and strength at its brute endurance and sweetness that grew from deeper roots. Beauty is not a rotten fortune, but I do dispute the rhetoric that my appearance solely constitutes my worth. And so I amend that standard in order to produce my own grounded abundance and aspirations that are far more resolute. In the next lifetime, the same beauty will not be resurrected. The lessons of the past that were once intersected with the weight of expectation that repeatedly affected my validation left any compensation to be rejected. It poisoned my purpose as if it was infected when the intentions of others virally inflected the core operations that I originally manifested. But I am proud. I do not have to be accepted. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> this next poem um, I've written is untitled. I wrote this because I first started getting up in the mornings at like six um, because I am not a morning person. Um, but I've been teaching myself because I my schedule has been crazy lately. And the only way that I can sufficiently make time for myself and meditate and feed and journal is in the mornings. So I've been getting up at like 5.30. And instead of journaling, this is what came up. Untitled. Shackles of fate upon steel fixtures Fixate instead on fragments of faith. Everything else is fuel to the fire. Follow through, follow through, grab onto the wheel, let fortune lead to forgiven pews. Everything kneels to golden view for the minute's view. And angled hourglass leaves sand to save, seconds to chew, tip it again. There is more to pursue. Sure as morning dew and seldom rains and heaven blue, there lies invisible faith in subjective truth. Everything else is fuel to the fire. Everything else is fuel to the fire. Right. <laughs> Um, this next poem is called Parallels. We are parallels. We were not meant to intersect. We run as equals, but on different tracks of intellect. In order to preserve it, I must leave it in order to respect that this connection is built on boundaries that we should not connect. 
What I have on my line is independence to protect. What you have on yours is freedom from neglect. We are two mirrors hung on opposite walls and we reflect, but instead of seeing clearly, we choose to see through lenses that we project. So there will never be connection, although there is equality. You repel, align, and expose the different parts of me, steadily shedding light on the truths that I don't want to see, but you are also aware that I can view your defiant individuality. We are two sides of the same coin valuable but never in the same reality as a coin cannot balance on its edge forever unless there is a lapse in gravity when one side falls to detriment the other exposes its personality but the downside of the first face is pavement and unaddressed possibility and if we should be magnets we should resist and not dwell on attraction as it favors opposites and compromise to quell my desire for you intoxicating as you are like white zinfandel i must reduce the risk of getting to know you so well what you reveal in me is the magic one casts in love spells but it is jinxed by your silence because you will never tell after a kiss that was nuclear splitting the same nucleus of ourselves that we were not meant to intersect. We are parallels. Thank you. This poem, next poem is called Salt. You bitter crystal, you pure silent pistol, you put flavor on my tongue, you dry my lips from the songs. I scream that you muted, that you stubbornly refuted. I computed the ratios of the times I loyally commuted to you in journeys and levels in all ways convoluted. You left grains and pillars and the flavor exfoliated, you disputed you left the light on without ever coming to turn it off. You diluted the spa spice in me, the cardamom, the sage, the sugar, and the hurt bay leaves I drank. You poured your poison into me and bloated my dreams with guiltless dishonesty. Salt of the earth, salt on my tongue, salt in my heart, salt. Thank you. And uh, this second to last poem um, takes a, is a really special one for me. Um, I wrote this very recently and had, I, I was so blessed to perform it at Brooklyn Museum between the two Obama portraits. Um, wow, <laughs> if we could ever say that we have a favorite poem, if that ever exists, I think this, <laughs> I, I've come close and I hope y'all love it. I really do. This poem is called Hunger. I crave joy that unabashed, uncontrasted joy, that unreserved, undisturbed joy that prophetic soul emetic emerging self that just is poetic that arms thrown wind blown hair a mess and feathers flown wind beneath my wings grown kept my crown fled my throne kind of joy let this starvation bring consecration, not bread nor wine. I want salvation. I would grasp it, reach and clasp it, deep exhale, and then I'd gasp it. I'd entrap it, the self that rid the riled. I'd self-reconcile with the inner child, let her relish in her wild summer solstice of a smile, make the night beguiled, for I am the dawn undefiled.
kind of joy. A prayer not passing. It's everlasting. Though tongues will dry, the soul will fly, joy, long surpassing this heaven on earth. That genetic joy that starts at birth, only God knows of its boundless worth. I'd purge it all just to be at the verge of this certain quenched consciousness. I thirst for this joy. Feed me joy, I crave joy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh my God, Sam Park, we crave you. You guys unmute your mics, please, for Sam Park, our second feature tonight. Oh. Thank you. I so appreciate you, Marissa. Thank you so much. Hi, ah, thank you. So good to see you. Ah, again. You know, I do this, I, I do this a lot. I see like there's 20 people in the room tonight. If everybody had three or four bucks and put it in the hat, right? We were at a cafe or a brewery or whatever. We're passing the hat around. That would be a very nice payday for these features, right? We like to keep these events free at Word is Right. Uh, but also remember Mary has her special request to donate to Rice. And so those things uh, are all in the live. They're all in the chat. Reach out to us and let us know. If you didn't get that, we'll get you all of that information. But please, 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 let's support these poets. If, you, if you're going to tell yourself, well, I'm not going to send her $3. That's stupid. No, it's not. Because if every person who said, I'm not going to send her $3, that's stupid, actually sent her $3, she'd be a $3 fucking richer. So please, you know, bless her by just sending her some cash because, <laughs> you, you know, she, she's got bills to pay too, you guys, right? And she's spending her time with us tonight. So let's, let's bless her by, by tipping her, by giving her a, a donation for her time, for her energy, for her love, something. Sam, where can people find you? How can they donate to you? How can they pay you, tip you, all that good stuff? Thank you so much. Um, Y'all can find me on Instagram at Pam period Sark. That's P-A-M period sark s-a-r-k so it's my name but like the first two letters are switched um if you would like to donate to me um a poet could use it <laughs> um thank you so much marissa for giving us this platform i really appreciate it um, my venmo is at samantha dash park dash one but i'm gonna put everything in the chat um thank you so much you have a book out yet Hmm? No, but I've, I've literally been working on a manuscript and it's almost done. And I Sam, really that I'm that. launching Poets next year, debut collections. If you want to launch with other poets next year, we're doing, we're doing big groups uh, for launching all together next year. So if you're interested, if you want to go on the list, uh, I, I will put you on the list. Uh, of poets who are interested in publishing. Mm -hmm. I am only focusing on debut collections, poets who've never done a book before, because it is such a freaking elitist thing, this publishing world. And Crazy. I'm done. I am done with it. Like, I'm like, bring, bring the masses. Let's go. Mm -hmm. I have volunteers who are helping me next year, who are other poets like Dr. Martina McGowan, uh, people who are, who are going to pour into our poetry community next year and really help us pump out incredible books. So if you want, Sam, I'll put you on the list. That goes with oh, for anyone who's never published a book of poetry. Let me Thank know. You so much. Yes, I would absolutely do that. I'll contact you. But thank you. All right. Again so I will let you know. Beautiful platform. Thank you everyone for listening. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, Sam. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I I love you. I I'm you. <laughs> I'm such a fan of yours. Um, you're so unapologetically. Oh, Diane. It was so. Thank you so much, Diane, for being here you're so unapologetically authentic and i think that that is something that's so rare in this life um that you just do you and fuck the haters and and screw the people who are going to say different because you know who you are and uh, that is such a freeing position to be in and i envy you 
I envy that in like the most, the best way, right? That the, I just, you and Mary know who you are. You know what you're all about in this life and you're unapologetically authentic women. And I envy that. God, oh, unapologetic, and you're jealous of that? Come on, Marissa. I love it. I oh, love it. Putting their pussy all over this place. You got no, no. Yeah, but that's courage <laughs> for you. We love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's <laughs> erotic is a coping mechanism. <laughs> it, it's the best <clears throat> mechanism, though. It's so much fun. It is so much fun. It is a it's a way of um, not being sad. It's a way of, of of finding joy in a measure measurement of of fun things in this life. <laughs> so yes, the letters of intent will go out January first, and then uh, and then I'll send contracts out. I so send me your email and I will I'll put you on that list. That goes for everyone. I say this every time. <laughs> if you've never published a book of poetry and you want to publish, it, we do it in a group so that the the workload is spread and that the exposure is exponential, right? We don't let anyone grind by themselves. You're not going to be left alone to go through the journey by yourself, which happens everywhere you go. We're building this platform to launch poets. It's never been done what we're doing in the literary world. We're branching into children's books next year. Um, like there's so much, you get, stamp the ticket and get on the train y'all um yes i want to see what your book was oh man i want to buy your book already like <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean oh my god you know terry rose jertson doc janning are in the house they're two poets who are getting published next year um you know sophia falco has a book already out right now which is amazing so it's just it's so much so much fun chance on has a lot of books he's got so many books you just you go buy chance on's books too all right so let me see who is um so we got <laughs> oh my god you know what let's do this let's just can we just unmute our mics again real quick and give a big round of applause to both of our features and sam park tonight yes 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 bravo, bravo. bravo. And I do apologize, you know, most of the time I tend to think that these poets have already published work. And so I don't, I don't pry, I don't ask them, right? Um, uh, so, so I just, uh, yeah, when I find out they haven't published, I'm like, well, let's go. Um, let's change that. We are making dreams come true. All right, open mic list. I got Miss Zaney. Ms. Poetica, Thomas Connor, Ramar Thompson, and MD Live. Welcome, Un Mesh and Sophia Falco are in the room. If you would like to be on the open mic list here for round one, let me know, please, and I will get you on the list. At the end of round one, we're going to shut off the live. We're going to shut off the recording, and we're going to go into the after hours, and it's it, you know, we're going to go dark. If you're a feature you want to read again in the after hours, you're welcome to do that. It's totally off the record, off the cuff. It's very laid back and fun, uh, super, super chill. All right, so if you're there, if you're coming in late now, I will get you on the list. All right, Ms. Zaney, are you ready? Ms. Poetica, you are on deck. <laughs> And Miss oh. Zaney is part of our erotic Miss Zaney and Miss Poetica, both, and Terry Rose. Uh, all three of them ladies have erotic poems in the women's erotic anthology. Yes, yes. I'm just like, do I do I read one from the anthology? Or I'm just like, what do I read? What do I what do I give you guys this evening? Um, I will give you um a latest poem. It's called um a shot of elixir F. I was given the opportunity to try a shot of elixir F, a house occupied by wanderers. At first, I was like. This is like something I've already tried. It feels like all it feels like all the others. This is where I'm hung left over. Bleh. This is where I'm hung over, left empty from the crash it gave me. 
when given, I was told that the sensations could last as long as four to five days, could keep boredom at bay, where I could have some fun and get excited for playing. Warning, may make hips and genitals levitate toward desires that one craves. <laughs> the overuse may leave your heart into an early grade. So please take accordingly. I take it and it tastes like a tropical island drink. Longing me for the kiss on after the first day, I dismiss the blushing that happened in the worst way. The inspiration brought by levitation kept my head spinning. Then the second day came, eh, nothing happened. So I carried on with my scheduled day. Day three, there were make out sessions to be had. Day four, there was so much to be glad about. It was so, yeah. The cold shower from round one made my session so steamy. Rounds two and three left me hot and heavy. Yet in between was this warm and fuzzy feeling of contentment of having my needs met. My stay here is set, however, the effects set to wear away as those fleeting moments were never meant to continue. In poem. Ms. Zany, yes, you guys unmute your mics, please, for Ms. Zany. Ms. Zany presents. Great piece, Woo! great piece. Zany. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, Ms. Oh, um, I'm gonna drop the link in the chat there. It, I, I, I put it out there and the universe delivers. Okay, so um, I found someone that will be hosting an erotica slam. Um, at, this coming Friday, um, October 15th at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, if you want to participate, I'm going to drop the link. Um, you have to sign up in order to perform. Um, feel free to come if you don't. Um, and I think there's Venmo cash prizes as well. So. I think I did sign up for that like a couple weeks ago already. Mm -hmm. And I'm, th I'm thinking... Shouldn't we be already talking about Santa, like Christmas and stuff? Because no! it's already October, right? <laughs> it's never too early to bring up Santa, right? <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Come down my chimney, ho, ho, ho. Okay. <laughs> Those of you who know that reference, that is my Sex with Santa reference. Welcome, Mr. Tezo. Zomak is in the building. Tezo, if you want on the open mic list, please let me know. If you want to wait till round two, that is totally okay. The list is in the chat. If I missed you, speak up. Let me know. Miss Poetica, you were up, my dear. Thomas Connor, you're on deck. Woo! You're looking beautiful tonight, too, by the way, Miss Poetica. Thank you. I do my best. I do my best. Um, so, let's see. Uh, I am going to do uh, my poem I just wrote. I um, posted it on my Instagram and my Facebook. So, um, this will be my first time doing it for an uh, open mic. So, here we go. It's called Dear Future Husband. Dear future husband, I am blind without my glasses, so I can't come looking for you. You must come looking for me. I wrote some things to tell you in advance because you won't see it when you first meet me. I know my eyesight is perfect. There will be times where I won't be able to see the beauty in myself, so I will need you to see it for the both of us. There will be days where the love you say you have for me seems a little blurry. And the only way to adjust my peripherals is to kiss me until the seconds become minutes and maybe we even get lost in hours. Hug me so tight that our heartbeats can be heard with every breath we breathe. 
Run your hands slowly from the top of my forehead, gently down to my cheekbones, like you're searching for every pain I've ever felt with the hope to erase it. And most importantly, I need you to not look back at the girl with the really huge booty when she walks by. I know it seems selfish, but it's the only way that you can reassure me just how much you love me and make me believe that I am all you see. I want the way you look at me to create a ripple effect strong enough to make all time stand still so I can cherish that moment for life. I don't have 2020 vision, but I have 50-50 love. I will do my best to meet you halfway. And some days I will even give you all of me because you see and you strengthen my potential. Dear future husband, there will be days where I will look at you and I can't see anything but tears in the wells of my eyes, not because of pain, hurt, or sadness, but because I am finally happy. Happy that God blessed me with a man that blinds me from any insecurities and a king that keeps me with a tunnel vision focus for the beautiful future we've united to build upon. So in this moment, with eyes wide open, I'm waiting. And that's that piece. It's Poetica! Oh my gosh. You guys unmute your mics, please, for Miss Poetica. Woo! Great piece. Great piece. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great piece. I appreciate you, Marissa. I'm so, God, you know what? I'm so, I love this, that everyone comes because it's such a mosaic of poets, I think, here on Saturday nights. And I hope you get to experience poets you've never met before. That's the whole point, right? Uh, and Ms. Poetica and Ms. Zaney and Terry Rose and myself and a bunch of other women are in this anthology that's coming out in December. I'm so excited. It's the most beautiful thing, too. It's the book. It's, it's just hot it's twenty thousand words of sex let's go you can't uh yeah there you go miss poetica uh where can people find you how can they get in touch with you and follow you and all that good stuff um so i am on ig um it is mz underscore poetica underscore 85 um and i am also on facebook um, I think it's, what is my Facebook? I think, I it's, think it's JP, JP Miss Poetica. I think it's JP Miss Poetica Boone. I think that's what it is. Look. But I, I, I don't really be on Facebook a lot. I'm, I'm mostly on Instagram. So just come on over to IG and you'll find me. Here, I'll type right your Facebook in the chat. Yes. Okay. All right. That's her Facebook in the chat. You guys can find her. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, and Instagram too. She's amazing. She does a lot of stuff with Galaxy of Poets. Um, yes, the poet yes, has spoken. That's my team. Did you see? Me. She gave me. She gave me a tribute today. I feel so special. Oh, I'm waiting for my trivia. I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> he don't love me like he loves you. <laughs> let, me, let me get to typing. Let me get to typing so I can put that out there. For that, for that, for that gentle, sensual, swooning voice of yours, madam. Maybe this will carry me into Monday because, you know, Poet Khan is she's very down here, and I'm like, that's so sexy. Maybe I can be sexy too. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> get it together for like Monday. Yes. You got all of Sunday. You got all of Sunday to get it together so you can be ready for Monday. Y'all better be back here Monday night for the moist Mondays. <laughs> Send me the link, baby. <clears throat> I will. And then don't forget, Wednesday is Ramar Thompson's workshop. I'm sure he's got something exciting planned. He, he does two workshops a month, so you, you, you don't want to miss it. Otherwise, you got to wait two more weeks for it, right? All right. We're going to keep rocking and rolling. I got Thomas. 
Ramar Thompson, MD Live, Unmesh, and Mr. Tezuzomak to finish up round one. We will jump to round two. In round two, I have Sydney, Sophia, and Luciana. If anyone would like to sign up for round two, just let me know. Thomas, thank you for your patience, my, my flip-flop ninja friend. I appreciate you. Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> no, I'm always patient. Listen, it's, it's, all, it's all good. It's all love. I'm always going to show love. So lately I've been writing a lot about my past. So growing up in Brooklyn, my room shaped in a makeshift space, sink a few feet away, kitchen ready, no stove, my room, house and two floors. I slept on the second, skylight, my nightlight, bed angled slightly, not enough room to call my own uneven tiles on the floor, burgundy in its stain, roof view to the stars, basement, dance hall shaped, long benches along the wall, window view only a quarter of Nordstrom Ave, Vanderveer Park in the background. My play outside sneakers, mud, marred, kept in corner, I cherish the space. My school kids in blue and red, white stripe around the edges, $12 and some cents. Re, only rich in color and culture, backyard view, Nostrand Ave, vagrant hangout, boombox in hands, weekends was live over there, brown liquor bag discarded, blowing across the sidewalk, cypher kids smoking, flame down to the clip, bag lady pushing cart, discarded remnants, remnants of someone's home, anyone's trash her treasure, the move of the world at my view. I escaped into the sanctity of Flatbush nights, always under twilight. My mind always in that space. Within one thought, I'm home again. End poem. Yes, Thomas, everyone, unmute yourself. Give a round of applause. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, thank you. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, while Marissa is taking care of her health in a sec. Oh, here she is. Uh, but Thomas, where can we find you online if we want to um, find uh, find out more about you? Yes, you can find me at uh, the Thomas Connor, C-O-N-N-O-R, at uh, Facebook and TAC7371 at um, Instagram. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Thomas, so much. Sorry, I ran to get my inhaler so I can do this because it's, it's wearing out. All right. Yes, man. Good thing I'm back because Ron, you cannot introduce yourself. You would not do an adequate job, my friend. <laughs> no, you would do an adequate job, but but I would do a really good job too. And so you got to welcome up Ron Mark Thompson. If you do not know who Ron Mark Thompson is, oh my God, yes, right. And the mini zines. <sighs> Shit, what did I do with my mini zine? You know, you know, this is. This is a poet's life. I'm kid. I kid you not. I will find my mini zine. It's here somewhere. But so I couldn't find my. I got COVID. my. Mirror. I got okay. my. Okay, good. I could not find my COVID vaccination card. Right. I couldn't find it. I've been looking for it for like a month or two. No, like at least a month. At least a month. I've been looking for it. Right. And this is all Ron Mark Thompson's fault. Let me tell you why. <laughs> because. So, so every Friday on my Instagram show is Feel Good Friday, and I read poems from other poets, from other books, right? And apparently, oh, uh, like maybe five or five weeks ago, six weeks ago, whenever I got the book, I used my COVID uh, vaccination card to mark a page in a book to read a poem, which was Ralph Mark Thompson's poem. <laughs> And then the book didn't, it got filed away. So on Friday, on Friday, I pull out the Bronx Memoir Project, volume five, and I flip it. And lo and behold, it was like, poof. My vaccination card popped out of the fucking book right on Ron Mark Thompson's poem. And I was like, holy shit, that's where it went. I've been looking forever for this. Thing is like your driver's license now, it's like your passport is so important, right? And 
it was on Ron Mark Thompson's poem in a poetry book. That is the life of a poet, y'all. So thank you, Ron, for- no, but that, 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 That's amazing that I was right in this. <laughs> that you have to come to New York City next year, you know, see the Bronx, see Manhattan, you know, see all the places, go to Brooklyn with Sam, you know what I mean? That's, and, and you're right, this card is so important. The other day I was putting it next to my apartment door, getting ready to grab it. Then I took my garbage out and put it took out some of the things from the shelf. And I look in the garbage, I'm like, hold on a second, that's my vaccination card. You know? So I'm like, and you're right, this is like, it's like a passport, you know, like you can, uh, uh, in New Mexico, do you have what we have in New York, in New York State, where you can also download it electronically on an app on your phone? So you I'm have- sure we, I'm sure we can. Oh. I'm sure, I, I mean, we are part of the US, Ron. We did swear <laughs> this earlier, okay? Well, like, I heard that, but did you say you you old Mexico and you're not really part of, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, you know, <laughs> I heard that. Yeah, and, uh, right, why does everyone say that? Like, it doesn't happen with New York and New Jersey, right? It only happens with New Mexico. It's it's such a funny joke that it runs, uh, it runs that way here. But yes, I'm sure we have access to digital apps here. <laughs> well, I heard that. I, I was watching you guys on Facebook Live earlier. I'm sorry I couldn't make it earlier to Zoom, but Mary, I heard you. I see you at the New Regan Poets Cafe, but today, like, this is the first time I heard you for, like, so many minutes. And, wow, you know, every word that you say, I'm, I was amazed, you know. And then, Sam, I saw you in Zoom here. I'm, you know, I haven't seen you for many months, so now I know that you've been hiding at the greenlit bookstore so marissa and i will stalk you there next year you know <laughs> we're gonna come yes, yes we're gonna get our books into her bookstore i'm excited you know by the time i come to new york i will have 30 of uh, 10 20 37 books out <coughs> by the time i come to new york next year that's 37 just books I, I can't even, it doesn't register. I, I still, it's, 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 I've surrendered to the journey. I'm just a, I'm just a vessel at this point. Um, <laughs> so if you guys want to be part of the journey, let's go. Sam, I'll bring you some books. Uh, there's an incredible amount of New Yorkers who are getting recognized this year and their books are coming out. So let's go. All right. Speaking of New Yorkers, Ron Mark Thompson. Hey, thank you, Ron, for for letting me find my vaccination card in your poem in the Bronx uh, Memoir Project, Volume Five. I read my fault, but I'm I glad read, you. I read our. I read your poem. I read Arlene's poem too. Um, <laughs> but I G shut me down. I G was having a shit fit Friday. Oh, that then no, I'm I'm just you know Marissa, I'm I'm amazed at your energy, your spirit. You know, Marissa mentioned the Wednesday workshops. I'm doing this coming Wednesday. I'll be doing uh, erasure, found poetry or prose. Another word is blackout poetry. You know, it's all different types of words. We're going to be doing that. And I saw Jensen a few minutes ago. He showed his scene that he created. Uh, that's the one I created uh, two weeks ago with the last workshop. And I have uh, Marissa's quote here, Roses smell so sweet by Marissa Prada, you see. And, and I, I was set on fire. Like he only he only put the first part in there. I was <laughs> yeah. for the second one, exactly. <laughs> what was the second one? Do you remember how it continued? Yes, roses smell so sweet, picked fresh from the stem or set on fire. Ooh, that's perfect but for Monday. He missed all the way. salt. He, he left out the salt. No, but anyway, well, Ron Mark Thompson, you're amazing. Yeah, it's a mini, it's a mini scene, and this is Chen Son's here. Uh, don't be silent, speak up. You know, he made me put that in in, in my scene here. And we created your uh, your Melissa heart, Marissa hearts, what I'm calling them. We also did that. So if anyone is interested, I'm putting in the information in in the Facebook event under the word is right. You know, it's free. Uh, we will we'll put the Zoom info on Tuesday or Wednesday morning. And you can you know, come and see it. 
Marissa, um, I saw earlier in the chat you put in that you started doing three Instagram shows a week early in the morning. So you have to get out of bed and stop being so sad. And that resonated with me because I'm going to read a poem about my sadness. And one thing I did find, if I keep myself busy and keep coming to your events, to other organization events, it keeps my sadness as much away as I can keep it away, though, you know, so, so it always helps. So I am, I like to write uh, poems based on uh, songs. Um, a few days ago, I heard The Inner Light, which is a, a song by uh, which Captain Because sang, uh, played, not sang, but played with a flute in Star Trek Next Generation a long time ago, and I remember that. And when I heard that these three words, uh, the inner light, I'm like, hold on, I can write a poem about that. So I renamed it my inner light. And here's my original lines that I wrote to them. My inner light. I know I've got this sparkle inside of me, just a little bit of inner beauty. It's what barely makes me reach each day to walk through life a little less gray. With it, I manage to get up, perform a few needed tasks. I like to do more and to be able to remove my mask. But my inner light does not shine very bright. It nearly goes dark each and every night. I don't think it ever saw its brightness as full as it could. I know it should have the capacity to do for me more good. Sadly, darkness has consumed my life for far too many years. It's been eating away my own hopes and causing more fears. I've been begging to be with myself at peace. I want my demons to be gone, to self-release. For too long, my dreams ever too far, never near. Instead, they shatter. They are no longer here. Trust me, I've lit the fire, ignited more warmth. I try to give it more energy. No luck. It's difficult. It requires a strong soul, not at all carefree. My sadness keeps returning. It always comes back takes away my brightness, causes a constant setback. I'm tired of my battles, tired of climbing each tree, tired of the struggles to set myself finally free. Sometimes I don't even know why I'm still fighting, not even sure why I reveal all here, why I'm writing. I thought my heart was big enough to give love and hope and in return to brighten my own light and jump that rope. I know I should be able to experience happiness. I should be good for someone to pray and to bless. My inner light should be stronger to fuel me, to make me make bigger my soul. Why doesn't it illuminate me more to fill that emptiness, to make me whole? So I beg you, I plead with you, my inner light, please shine more fully. Please make me bright. The end. Oh, Romar Thompson! I'm good at bringing sparkle, so I can bring some sparkle to you. You guys unmute your mics, please. Give Ron Mark Thompson a big round of applause. Woo! Thank you. It's so good to hear from you. It's amazing and thank you for your poetry. Thank you. Same here, Sam. You know, I really miss you, you know, but having heard you tonight, I'm so glad Marissa gives so many features the chance, you know, to shine and to 
hear them, you know, and Sam, you were amazing. I'm so glad you're, you're doing so well with your bookstore. And, you know, and yeah, I want to see everyone more here. You guys are what really fuels me, you know, and Marissa, I, again, I don't know how you have the energy. You're not feeling too well. You're going through all of this, you know, it's just amazing. Keep doing Marissa. We need you. We need you to have us in our community, you know. So thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Word is Right. Come on Wednesday uh, to the workshop. I'll put the info in the chat. I also do my own workshops with the Bronx Art and Fun Hub. I'll put that in the chat. It's all free. Let's keep supporting each other. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate you. Thank you, Ron. I promise. Um, <laughs> in fact, I did the <laughs> acknowledgements page for the Women's Erotic Anthology today, and I was just like, Thank you everyone for making me get out of bed every day and work harder and longer than anyone else. So yeah, thank you guys for making me get out of bed every day. What a uh, nice, that's a great thing you put in the book. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, MD Live, I put you on the list, my friend, as an executive decision. I don't know if you're ready or if you're actually here. Yeah, I'm here. Would you like to? It's okay. Would you like to go? Yes. Okay. And and you up a little bit because you're sounding a little bit far for some reason. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Better. Okay. Um, I don't have my video on because I'm driving to work. So, but I would like to read a piece, another piece by my son. Um, the last year of his high school, they had a contest, and based on previous pieces, the audience picked what you had to write about. And so um, my son had everybody pick that he had to write about Black Lives Matter. Um, so this is a piece that he wrote, which ended up he won the contest and had his card note paid for a year. And this is how it goes. Before you can, before you open your mouth to say all lives matter, I hope these names be scarred in the back of your memory. I promise you, Belando Castile's daughter will never forget. Eric Garner's mother still misses her kid. Tamir Rice will never get to dream again. Michael Brown surrendered and still ended up dead. Sandra Bland cannot apologize for being black. And Trayvon never asked to be dealt with like that. So please, choke on the bullets you shot in our backs. You see, you get your cops to kill mine and gentrify my neighborhood and spill black blood on those streets where your children will play and kill my black blood in the sheets where you lay and still fix your tongue to silence me when I say Black Lives Matter. Before you open your mouth, say appropriation does not exist. It is the way you use your lipstick to overdraw your lips to steal elements of my culture as if you own that shit. And Miss Kardashian, Bo Derek braids are not legit. And to be honest, no, you are not that thick. But since you want to be black so bad, let me explain to you what being black comes with. Sarah Bartman, the thickest woman in the world was black, yet a slave. She was traded and sold to be the face of a circus act that gave white America another black. Oh, sorry. They gave white America another black person to laugh at. <clears throat> they gave white America another woman to laugh at. And you wonder why black women get mad when you glorify a white girl with, a, with her when her ass is fat. Is because when it comes to in darker shades, we are raped, blamed, murdered, and shamed for that. 
is the epitome of exploitation and racism, the ridicule and commodification of my people, perversely from the same country that pledged our souls in the sanctuary of liberty under the namesake they call us equal. Yet the systematic oppression is still relevant. I know sometimes my black mothers, you wonder, maybe if I if you prayed a little harder someday, then maybe your sons won't become another statistic. Not another number to fuel another march. Where were <clears throat> where we try our best to shake the world so hard that it will break the chains of the future slave you hold so dear enough to call your children. You have to keep holding on to that hope and stay strong because this is the country that's supposed to represent change. This is the country that's supposed to know right from wrong. This is a country that supposed to set my mama free from worrying and wondering if I'll ever make it home. But y'all, Ain't we lucky? The world could never produce another soul in the like of ours, nor will it ever come close. We speak sunshine into the universe and wrap it and wrap the world in our warmth. We gave it life and fertility to birth love and humanity. Y'all, ain't we lucky? The grace of our melanin came with us. So much beauty and elegance, sophistication and charm, and attention undivided much so that our lives gave thanks for the guidance even when our lips couldn't, even when the world say we shouldn't. In peace. God damn, MG Live, did you just drop that? Oh my God. Uh, that, was a, that was a piece my son wrote his last year of high school. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah wow. it was, um they based like everybody had an entry piece that they had to submit for the contest and based on your entry piece the audience picked what you should write about and everybody picked that he should write about black lives matter but he took it a step further mm. i can't wait to see what your what 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 he keeps doing um yeah he's uh <laughs> i i told him i was like dude when i taught you how to write poetry i did not know you was gonna surpass everything that i write i'm like dude let's keep fostering that let's let's keep nurturing and fostering yeah. that um yeah. whatever you him, need i told him i said man we have to put a book together. And so he sent me a, uh, he sent me a, because he's never had a poetry book done. I've never had an actual poetry book done. So he sent me a book cover last night that he drew up. And all of this is a silhouette of me and my wife and him and his wife. And it's supposed to be a book of poems dedicated to our wives. Oh my God, I love that. that. First thing he wants to do. If you want to, if you want to do that, MD, like we can totally talk about doing that in the launch next year. Um, with, because I, I'm a one woman show. You got to know, I <laughs> doing the 21 books by myself this year is a lot. You forget, uh, or, or maybe a lot. I know a lot of people don't know, but I actually have two other jobs. <laughs> in addition to publishing <laughs> so and i'm raising two kids so um it's, your hands uh, are completely full <laughs> but that's okay because i am a really good delegator and so i i i can totally take help and accept help i love help <laughs> and i can delegate people to do things so that we can all i i, I don't want to turn anyone away next year i want to be able to say yes to everyone uh who wants to be here uh, who is willing to do the work, right? People have to be willing to do the work when they go to a publisher. You can't just drop your shit and say, here's my stuff, make it beautiful. No, you got to come and be prepared to do the work. And if you can't do the work, you can't get your book launched. I mean, it's, this is very simple. It's very easy. And we're very, I'm very clear cut about that with poets. 
but yes, MD, if you and your son would want to do a collaborative book and do a collection, you know, where you, you both um, have parts into a book, I, that would be so much fun. That's legacy work, right? It's the hard work of hard work people. Oh, yeah. that's, that's what I say. He's, um, he's pretty stoked about it because he haven't written anything in a while. Um, since oh, he he'll write. Oh, he'll write. You go yeah. tell him that he's got a letter of intent coming January 1st. He he going to write between now and January 1st. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just saying. I, I told him, I said, man, if I don't kept this up since I was six years old, you can keep it going. Absolutely. And and then, you know, does he have children? Yes, he just, him and his uh, fiance just go. had a baby. There you she go. Think about where what that baby is going to be doing in 10, 12, 15 years, right? This is legacy work. Uh, I, I I coach these poets. It's, it's, it's so much more than a publishing house. It's an incubator for greatness. I, I'm just telling you now. The coaching that you get, uh, learning and understanding what your role is with your, with your words. Um, yeah, this is legacy work that we're doing. So yes, MD, I will put you on the list for sure. I definitely want to be amongst the great and red or green books. Cause let's go, <laughs> let's fucking go, right? Let's just go. I'm not looking back. I'm not stopping, and I'm not apologizing to nobody. If you come, you better stamp your ticket, and you better hang on. And if you can't, then get the fuck off. That is what I'm saying. I don't have time to mess around with clowns. I want to be here with people who want to win. If you want to win, let's go. And, and talk about the next winner. I, it was it was morning time for me. I was having my coffee this morning with Unmesh at, at 12 hours ago. It was 12 hours ago, Unmesh, that we were we were here in this exact same spot. Unmesh has had his beauty rest. I have not. And now it is nighttime for me, and the sun is shining. God has brought the sun out for Unmesh. It is shining on him. Uh, so now the roles are reversed, and and. He <laughs> And he is on my mic, and I get to introduce my wonderful, beautiful friend from India, Unmesh Mohitka. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Marisa. Thanks a lot. Isn't it? Zoom has uh, brought the world closer. We would have never met if there was no Zoom, <laughs> or in fact, there was no pandemic. <laughs> so yes, so I will do a few short poems erupting fury this is a short poem poetry in 13 i like to write short poems yeah this first one is a poetry in 13 erupting fury hopeless jury dark night lonely star awaiting sunrise fighting shining brightly fighting shining brightly this was the first one. The second one, this is my one of my favorite poems. Uh, this is a short one, longer than the one earlier, but I like it because it talks about uh, the battles of mine. Battles of mine. Rarely are kind. They whine, unwind, rewind. So fragile, single teardrop can demolish it. So strong rivers of blood cannot shake it. Try to control, it drifts into the unknown. Try to control, confines you to the jail of boredom, routine and tradition. Unfortunately, mind never minds its own business. It has a life of its own. It has a life of its own which nobody can rule or own. It never minds the gap. Neither the stars can guide it, nor the maps. It never minds the ga gaps. Neither the stars can guide it, nor the maps. And this is the last one. Like a river flowing nonchalantly in one direction to the valleys and mountains, sometimes laughing loudly as a waterfall, sometimes crying silent, silently like a water in a pond, survive the parched land, deserts, 
loveless nights memories of loved one kept him alive he lived for the memories memories served him well summer spent waiting for rain lips were parched as the land every drop of water weighed in life he didn't even waste his tears why waste tears for things unchanging things did not change with time he changed all things still mattered life made more sense change do change you sometimes status quo changes you beyond recognition sometimes status quo changes you beyond recognition and this is the last one very short one neither left nor right neither left nor right or central i am abandoned horizontal with no sides i am abandoned horizontal with no sides thank you thanks a lot on mesmo hikar my my well rested friend it's so good to see you again <coughs> yes I love, love, love it. If you guys are not traveling around the world to Unmesh's open mic, he has an open mic, uh, 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 730 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Saturdays. Is it every other Saturday or is it every Saturday? Every Saturday, every Saturday. Every Saturday. So yeah. you got to do what I do, which is just wake the hell up and go to it because there's so many incredible people at this open mic and it's from all over the world. Uh, so it's, it's so much fun. We go Thanks, everywhere man. on this platform. Where else can people find you? And Unmesh has his book, Life Shadow Light. I should have had it with me. I could show it. Uh, I love having your book and in, in showing it. Yes. Uh, yeah, Luciana, thank you. So one thing <laughs> I just wanted to highlight, I think Marisa is uh, one of the pillars of our poetry community. Uh, she has helped everyone. She is a motivator. She encourages each and everyone. And she is a very strong woman. So kudos to Marisa. And thanks for all the good work you are doing. And all the best. Thank you, Umesh, so much. Because on the days where I don't believe I can do it. And there are those days. <laughs> I, I hear your words, my friends. Thank you so very, very much. And to finish us out tonight uh, for at least round one, this is just the first round. So if you're watching live on Facebook, you gotta get to the Zoom room for the after hours. The link is in the live. So there's no excuse. Uh, we're going to shut off the live, shut off recording, and move into the after hours after Mr. Tezozoma. Uh, features are welcome to read again. Uh, if you read in the first round, you're welcome to read in the second round again. Uh, and we'll do that uh, at least until I can't go any longer because Romer Thompson is here. But I'm feeling pretty spry, uh, you know, <laughs> feeling pretty spry tonight. So let's go. Mr. Tezozoma, and you got your wood in hand. Are you ready? Yes, I'm sporty wood. <laughs> you know I had to say it. I had to say it. All right, let's give this a shot, see how it goes. But if you read 
was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof, her beauty and the moonlight overthrew. She tied you to her kitchen. And from your lips she drew Hallelujah 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 God above, but all I ever learned from love was how to shoot at someone who I drew. Yeah. And it's not a cry you can hear at night. It's not. Somebody who's seen the light It's cold and it's broken Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah I did my best, it wasn't much, I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch, I told the truth, I didn't come to a time when you let me know what's really going on below, but now you never show it to me, oh, well, remember
and as wood, drum and the guitar, strings. Please unmute your mics for Mr. Tezo Zomog. Amazing, bravo, Mr. Tess. Amazing, I love it. All right, we uh, Tezo, do you have anything coming up? Anything uh, interesting? You have a gr a great book out, which of course I have. <laughs> And you have read from, thank you. And I will keep reading from. W wonderful. Uh, just, you know, I'm finishing my artwork cover and going through my second revision of my second book that's due uh, pretty soon, as soon as I get all the pieces together. And uh, we will see. Obviously, you, you guys know I always keep writing heavy duty stuff. So, you know, got to keep working at it. It's okay, heavy duty. It's, it, it gotta slap it on, right? Uh, sometimes it just needs to be heavy. Uh, most of the time, it just is heavy, and uh, so you know what? That's it's fine. Don't apologize. It's the way it is. We love you unapologetically. So uh, if you're watching live on Facebook, we are going to go into the after hours party, which means we're gonna stay here, <laughs> but you are going. <laughs> you're gonna go away because you're not in the Zoom room. You got to be in the Zoom room for the after hours party. We're going to shut down the live. We're going to shut down the recording and we are going dark. So if you're in the uh, live Zoom room, uh, definitely. Sam, thank you so much, my beautiful friend. Hey, Sam, before you go, uh, we're going to do our toast. We're going to do a toast. All right. Uh, so everyone who is in the Zoom room or watching live, before we break, uh, for the round two, we're going to do our, 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 our weekly toast to bid farewell to everyone. Uh, so if you're sticking around, stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right. Those on the live, we're saying good night to you. All right. So raise your glass. Here is uh, uh, the Gaelic uh, toast for you all. Here's to health and your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and be merry, all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry, bad thoughts to refrain, for we may or may not ever all be here again. Thank you all. Good night, everybody. If you're staying in the if you're staying here in the Zoom room, don't go anywhere.